So we are here trying to understand another aspect of life that is prayer life. That calls upon we need to talk with God as a way of understanding ourselves and more discovering what is in ourselves. And in this discovering ourselves help us to enter deeper in our human relationship with God also being on the ground because as human beings apart from us going for studies apart from us going for research apart from us going to the space there is another world that has been nation times of trying to enter deep in ourselves many people in nation times like in the desert where people like saint anthony of the desert the certain way of life in the for as a monastery that is trying to go deep down in themselves apart from the world noise of alexandria and in the desert they are able to enter deep into themselves in a special way to have the relationship between themselves and god and the creation this place we want to develop it to come a place of prayer is a sanctuary and you can see from that far up there we have the graveyard as you can see the across is up there those are brothers who have died and uh, they are living in a new life with god so having to understand this is the cemetery it makes us have the idea of who are we in the eyes of the world and they have rested here for many years be it old or young people they are buried here so where are their souls where are they are this is the god heading to and for that reason we came to the idea once we know about this sanctu- this cemetery we can now try to deepen our understanding of who are we and after this world is there any other place to live as we shall go and walk in and see what is going to take place we want to enter from this direction from beyond the bush area but out of this something good can come out of and the trees as they are growing tall and big they are also giving us an element of how the nature takes care of itself and doesn't matter where where you are one can develop from the point of where he is standing from this place is not so rainy but in itself it has its own riches because these trees are able to grow and get water from far underground and we shall use this part to enter into this place which has been uh, or has an intention of becoming a place of prayer the brokenness of life the dry matter that once these trees were living now some of them are dead they shed off their leaves and small branches fall down to ground and from there they decompose and they form manure for the trees the humus is developed from there this is the gate whereby it might be not very wide in the sense that once you enter here you enter one by one not in a rushing way because you want to enter here your own self alone for prayer and it's by that purpose it was made a small gate or a small entrance and here we come to the place where we normally begin our prayer life way of the cross the prayer prayer for meditations starts from this background in the realization that Jesus prayed in the garden of gethsemane and it is depicted there are stones there and this happened to be the garden of like garden of, of gethsemane uh, where you come sit down you meditate about your own life and you try to have the pains that are in you getting out the ooze out and you put your intention on prayer so that as you walk along you are able to discover your ways uh, 
uh, we also have a project that we have we carry on here for um, income generating project for the parish. We have some quarry and some of, some of these zones that we normally have. Realize that we have many natural resources that we need to make use of. And these resources, if they are not made used of, we may think the place is poor and miserable. But we have many resources that are also underground. And in a simple way, without even big machines, we try to, to work it out how we can make use of these resources. And you can have these stones. You have also the, on the other side, you have the Mount of the Barast uh, over there. And uh, it's also got from this. And there are people who work here who earn their daily bread out of this quarry. And these are the places we normally have, we dig our stones from. And you can see the heaps and the rocks over there. And they have been helping us to, to promote the parish as a means of realize of evangelization and also an income for the apostolate. This quarry has been here many years. It is not my invention, it has been here. But when it came, we realized that we can also do something on the, on the same quarry. I want to thank those who are before us as priests who did a lot of work. They built many churches through these stones. And also on our part, we are making use of these stones to make the ends meet. To build some houses, to build some churches using these materials. And uh, it's a hard work. It's a tough work for those who work in the quarry. The sun is very hot and they're patient enough to, to be able to do this work, to earn a living. It's not a simple work. The sun is very hot and scorching. But as Swali man says, Ajanika Mpini hafija. Na utaka chamfunguni shati mtu ainame. Having that in mind, so the quarry men who work here are always tough. Because seated under this sunshine, the whole day chopping stones is not easy. But they are on to want and want to also learn and live in. And through this, they get something for the families, they get something for themselves, and also for the future uh, as um, to do something in the store for also for the future. These are the stones we're talking about, the quarries. You can see the walls are going up and high as they excavate on the ground. So we still have some more stones even underground here, which need to be to be removed. And with time we are going to do this work and hopefully that is going to have a good impact in evangelization and letting the gospel of Christ reach the other people and be known by, the, by all nations. Now, this is a place of prayer. After we go for the way of the cross and prayers in all other places, we make here as a conclusion. Uh, after every journey, as we mentioned in the beginning, we need to sit down and make a bit of reflection on what life is all about. Through these staircases, we move down and we move up, down going to the altar. This is the graduation going down. It's also another area of coming down to the earth, to ourselves, down to the earth. The community of the faith of people normally assemble on these benches all round and the minister of the Eucharist or the person who is leading be a priest or a deacon he comes here up and he gives the final conclusion on the safari being a place of prayer we have set apart this to be the altar 
where we have and read the word of we celebrate the Eucharist. And here we normally put a number where we proclaim the word of God. And in the center of the people, in the, in the congregation, we raise up our voice and our hearts to the Lord. And it has also given us another dimension of looking at life in serenity. At this place we are is always quiet. There is a lot of silence in this place. A lot of silence. You only get the birds, the crickets, the flies, the bees, but not human noise or pollution. Coming this way, the celebrant has his own chair where he sits as the message is being delivered, as reading, and as the congregation is going on singing and praising the Lord. This altar is very symbolic, it is made by the natural stones from our quarries. They are very columns or very pillars, a symbol of the Trinity. But also, it has a dimension of the African cooking place. In the African cooking place, we have very stones that support the pot or the sufria. So these stones support where we are going to place the bread and the wine to be converted through transubstantiation to become the body and blood of Christ. It is being transformed as a fire burns from the bottom and the food is being cooked. In the same respect, the fire of Christ burns the sacrifice and the Lord turns it into the blood and body of His Son, Jesus Christ. This is a cross. We mentioned down up there that we normally have the of the cross. And this cross is very symbolic. As you can see how it looks like, it has a lot of meaning. There are these three knobs, the symbol of the nails. Jesus was crucified. He was nailed there on the hands and at the feet. On top of it, there was a writing that this is the king of the Jews. But as you look at this cross on top, here is a star. The star that the Magi saw from the east and they followed it to where the king Herod was, asking where is the king born? Because you saw the star from the east and you followed it. And therefore, the one who saw was seen at the east is the one who was crucified as a king of the whole world. The star at the bath, the nails on the cross for our salvation. So that king died for us. As the Magi brought the gifts, the broad rich types of gifts, gold, frankincense, and mar. The symbolic of them that the gold is for the king. The star who saw the king was born. The symbol that he, the king who was seen, died on the cross. Incense, he sacrificed himself on the cross for us. Because he's a high priest who gives his life for us. He sacrificed himself out of love.